Hello everyone. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about the definition of the Laplace transform. Of course, in previous chapters and in calculus, uh, you saw operators that took a function and mapped it or transformed it uh, via differentiation into another function. Uh, here, Laplace transforms is uh, an integral operator. Uh, it, it is another form of transformation. Um, the good thing with this is many are already uh, created, uh, like these transformers are already created, and you'll see a table. But it's worth to uh, to know how to do it. And uh, let's start off with uh, the definition that says if you have uh, f of t, uh, a function on let's say uh, 0 to infinity so this is a one-sided uh, uh, transform uh, the Laplace transform um, let's put the, this for it the Laplace transform uh, of f uh, is uh, the function capital F is the function F Uh, defined by uh, this integral. And it's going to be uh, capital S, uh, capital F of S, uh, with the symbol 0 to infinity, and uh, you have negative uh, exponent uh, exponential to um, negative ST times the function F of T dt. So the domain of f of s, uh, this is also, you may see this symbol uh, as well for Laplace transform. Uh, so the domain of f of s is all values of s for which the integral that, uh, that is stated here it exists. So uh, the Laplace transform of f uh, is denoted by this capital F or this uh, format here. So as you see, that this is an improper uh, integral, right? This is an improper integral, uh, and uh, more precisely, it's, uh, it can be written, uh, let's write it this way, as defined. Uh, we can switch it to a limit and say n uh, approaches infinity so the integral is going to be from 0 to n and this is the same thing all right uh, so whenever the limit exists whenever uh, let's do it here whenever the limit of course exists all right so let's do an example Uh, determine uh, the Laplace transform for a constant function. So let's do an example. Uh, let's find uh, Laplace transform to some function f of s, right? And uh, f of t is uh, just a constant function t, where t is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so here you just apply the definition, right? Uh, so 0 to infinity, uh, exponential to negative st, uh, times, uh, uh, let's do actually a constant function, let's do one. Let's start with uh, kind of a simpler case um, as the first example, uh, times dt. And that's going to give us the limit. Um, uh, let's switch it to here uh, the, to the improper integral that we know. Uh, it's going to be the limit of n approach infinity of 0n from 0 to n 
e to the unit of st times dt. Okay. Um, yeah, so here all we need to do is find um, uh, the antiderivative to this, which is going to be um, e to the unit of st over s uh, negative. Um, and t goes from 0 to n. Okay? So we do limit uh, n to approaches infinity. And now um, we can take 1 over uh, negative s out. Uh, or, and uh, then we do for n. Then subtract and do for uh, the evaluation for 0. Right, or, or uh, you can switch it because of this negative. We can switch them around and do one over s um, minus e to negative s n over s. So this is something you know how to work with from calculus, and you can just try and see which format you have. So uh, given that s is positive uh, we know this exponential function uh, is going to approach zero as n approaches infinity right uh, so uh, you know from these transformations for of this exponential function that uh, if s is positive then negative s is negative so as n approaches infinity, then uh, that uh, exponential uh, gonna uh, approach zero, and uh, and that leaves us with one over s. So, what is the Laplace transform for a constant function one? It's one over s. Uh, for s uh, being positive and of course here you'll ask what happened when s is less than or equal zero uh, so when uh, you look at the integral of, from zero to infinity of uh, exponential of uh, negative st dt it's gonna diverge okay so uh, this transform works for s being positive All right, let's do another uh, example uh, that is uh, common in the table. So uh, let's they have a function f of t uh, is uh, exponential uh, function to a t here, uh, where a is a constant. Uh, so let's determine Laplace transform uh, using definition. All right, so. So using a uh, definition, uh, then f of s is zero. Uh, uh, the integral from zero to infinity, uh, exponential of uh, negative s t times uh, e the function f, which is this exponential of uh, a t times dt. Uh, both are exponential, so we can uh, go ahead and uh, add. So, negative st minus uh, plus at. Uh, so, I can factor s. Now, we can factor at because, so to show you on the side here, what's going to happen. So, we have negative st plus at. So t near the s plus a. Then if you decide to factor a negative, if you decide to factor a negative, it's going to be uh, negative t s minus a. All right, so let's do that. 
times tt. All right, so this is not bad. Uh, let's switch it to the improper integral form using the limit. Um, and from here, uh, you know what you need to do. finding the antiderivative which means dividing by that uh, exponent that's there and we have negative so we can switch them around just like we did with the previous one and uh, and remove the negative so for zero it's just gonna be one over s minus a for n instead of t uh, we're gonna have um, this all right so uh, again uh, let's say s we need s greater than a here um, you see so uh, s equal a you, you have something but we can start the integral from the beginning but um, let's do the case for s greater than a because if s is greater than a um, s minus a is positive then this is negative so s and bigger this is driven down to zero and then uh, what's left is this so maybe I'll, I'll just do it in here uh, for s squared than a all right and just keep it on the same page so it is mm, so it is kind of uh, uh, the next question would be what is s for s is less than or equal a it's gonna also diverge again uh, so uh, here the the domain of uh, this transform f of s um, here uh, the domain is this uh, is this one s greater than a all right so we we can do more examples and uh, which you you'll see there they show up in in that table so um, we can do more examples um, uh, but um, maybe I'll do another video where I, I work out uh, some examples using definition <coughs> but here uh, an important thing that we need to know here is a theorem uh, that uh, the linearity is an is an important uh, property here for the transform linearity of the transform is an important uh, property here to know so uh, briefly there are some details to write but let's say uh, the transform of uh, a sum of two functions uh, is the is the sum of the two transforms uh, let's say the, uh, a multiple uh, it's a multiple times a transform and of course here f f1 f2 are uh, function whose Laplace transform exists for some s greater than alpha and uh, uh, c is a constant or something like that and s is greater than alpha so here of course the transform exists so that's a, a simple way to say it um, and 
you will see that in examples. So uh, briefly, uh, so uh, so a brief table, just give you an idea, uh, which you'll find in books uh, of Laplace transform, is if you have on, on the uh, left side the function, and the right side I'll do the the Laplace transforms. So, for example, the constant function one, uh, we found one over s for s uh, positive. For this exponential function of a t, uh, we found that one over s minus a for s greater than zero, uh, greater than a, not zero a. Uh, let's say um, t power n and n equal uh, from 1, 2, and so forth, positive, of course, integers here. Uh, you're going to find that if you do this definition, you're going to find n factorial divided by s power n plus 1 or s being positive. What else? If you do for sine bt, uh, you're going to find b over s squared plus b squared for s being positive. Let's do cosine bt. Uh, it's going to be s over s squared plus b squared s positive. Uh, there are more. Um, I'll write the, the important ones that you'll frequently see and here n of course 1, 2 and so forth you're gonna find it's n factorial um, divided by s minus a times, oh, exponent n plus 1 for s squared than a uh, what if uh, they're combined the exponential with sine uh, it's B, it's actually a nice formula here. So the bottom line, you want practice few using definition, but you always have the transforms here in the table that you can look at or use as a reference and apply. All right, so this is a brief table, and uh, as I mentioned, um, you can uh, use these as a reference, um, and you know how they came about is from using that definition. Uh, another thing to talk about is the, that is uh, needed for transform for uh, existence of the transform. Uh, a lot of times, of course, when you're asked to do a transform or something, it exists. But um, for some technical work, of, we're going to talk about uh, these. Uh, so there are functions for which the proper integral, of course, fails to converge. Uh, and for any value of s, and this is, in this case, there are some cases. So let's say uh, we're going to need to talk about a piecewise continuity here, uh, a new concept. So if you have a function over some interval a, b, it is said to have a jump discontinuity if you have some t naught belonging to open interval a, b, if f of t is discontinuous at t naught, uh, but the one-sided limits exist as finite finite numbers so this may sound like a lot of talk but uh i'll, I'll write it down and we do some examples on it it's not actually that bad um, and you're not going to spend too much uh, 
work on this but it's good of course to know in case you're exploring uh, this idea whether the transform exists or not so uh, piecewise continuity here a, a definition and I'll try to abbreviate it in a way so we say that we have a function f of t is said to be uh, piecewise continuous uh, on uh, a finite interval um, if f of t is continuous if f of t is continuous at every point every point uh, in a B except possibly for a finite number of points Um, uh, at which f of t has a jump discontinuity. So a function f of t is, is said to be a piecewise function. Uh, uh, so um, let's add for this uh, now uh, it is said same to be piecewise continuous on same talk let's say zero to infinity if f of t is continuous uh, on if it is continuous on let's say zero to n for all and greater than zero and i'll give you examples on this so uh, based on the first one here is another second one is added uh, the the function f of t is, is said to be continuous on uh, this interval if uh, it is continuous on zero to n um, and for all n that are greater than zero so let's give you some examples. These are not bad. You're not going to spend too much time on them, but um, just to explain, let's say you have a, here a piecewise function, uh, and the rules are t when t is between 0 and 1, it equals to 2 when t is between 1 and 2, and it equals to t minus 2 all squared when t is between um, 2 and 3. Uh, and as you see, the, the first two intervals strictly, and the, the last one is not. So as you see here. So if you sketch this, you, you kind of get an idea what happens from 0 to 3. So if I sketch this, uh, just uh, for the sake of it, just uh, to in general, you'll see that kind of like you have something like this, then something like this, So from the graph of f of t, we see that this f of t is continuous on the, uh, the from 0 to 1, right? So it is continuous from 0 to 1. It is continuous from 1 to 2. It is continuous from, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, this is close to, Two to three, 
and uh, the the points of discontinuity are zero uh, one and two uh, and the function has a jump discontinuities um, but says the one-sided limit exists as finite numbers so here we have a let's say a jump discontinuity right but uh, the the one-sided limit still exists and they equal to finite numbers uh, in particular for t equal one right uh, the left hand limit uh, equal, is one and the right hand limit is two so So there is a jump discontinuity, but uh, the the left limit and the right hand limit are finite. So in this case, we can say that the, the function f of t is uh, f of t is piecewise continuous on zero three. So just apply the that definition. Um, it's not that bad. And uh, maybe I'll give you another example on it. Let's see. Yeah, so think about a, a, a piecewise function that's defined over intervals. Uh, and if you see something like this sketch, I think we, we don't need to do many, but if you see something like this sketch, where it is continuous, it is continuous on here and there and there, uh, and you have a jump discontinuity, but uh, when you look at the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, at that uh, jump, they are finite numbers, then you can say it is piecewise continuous on the, the interval from here to here. Um, yeah, I don't see any example that we need much work than what it is stated here. All right, uh, another concept that I will do examples on, I'll do several examples on, is uh, this concept that, that is about um, exponential order. Alpha. And this also here uh, definition it says you have a function f of t uh, is said to be uh, exponential uh, order alpha uh, if there exists uh, positive constants T and M uh, such that um, the absolute value of the function is less than or equal M times uh, the exponential function to alpha T for all the small t greater than or equal T. And um, I think a quick example, then I'll do more examples in, an, in the, another video. Uh, a quick example is if we look at uh, this function, um, then definitely uh, uh, by examining this, it's going to be less than or equal this exponential function here 
which gives you alpha to be 5, right, and um, m to be 1 at the front here based on, on the form, right, and um, yeah, so we can, uh, um, and of course t is uh, any positive number, so the uh, we can say of exponential order alpha equal 5. Um, but I, I will do s some more examples and I'll do the how to come up with this using the limit and looking at the rates, looking at this function to being on top and e2 alpha t at the bottom and uh, maybe you need to use Lopita rule or something and see whether you get zero or it goes to infinity and uh, and figure out from there uh, but there is a before I close this video there is of course a, a condition for existence of the transform uh, if you have uh, let's just add it as a piece of knowledge as well and it's a theorem so if you have f of t uh, is piecewise continuous on uh, this interval and of exponential order alpha then Laplace transform of f uh, this exists for s is greater than alpha so this is a condition for existence there is a proof to it and um, what to make all this clear I'll do a video with examples and um, it's 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 not a difficult topic is actually one of the interesting topics is Laplace transform and using engineering and as you see a, a nice thing a table available gives these transforms and uh, thank you